Hey guys, welcome back. This is the Fever Fever here. And as you might have saw in the thumbnail for this video, this is my first restoration video. And after I asked you in one of my previous layout update videos, I asked you if you guys would like to see a restoration video of this engine here. So this is a 1950s, 1960s Barney 10 wheeler. And it is a kit built. So I picked this one up for $25. It did say it was not working at the time. And should set it on this line. Uh, but the thing was, the person who tested it must have had the wheels the wrong way. Are we on the track? Yes, we are on the track. Okay. Okay. It does run, but it is not the greatest at that. It also does trip out on the express points. And... Yeah, it's about as slow at speed at the moment. And you do need to run it just a little bit faster just to get over those easy track points. All right? Just back that up, back in the shot again. It is a little uneasy in, in reverse, uh, but as you guys will probably find out later, move this back out a little bit since it's not glued down. All right. Let's see, uh, there is a custom drawbar that I did have to actually make for this because it did actually come without one. So I am going to start by hooking that. If you can note the brass wheels clean here then very dirty over there. So yeah, put you guys down to here. For this you kind of just have to bend it out of, out of place and then there is just a little screw down here. Just put the table there. Tender is fairly free rolling. And then if you did not notice there is a blue tacked coupler on it. So it can pull since it did not have any coupler boxes on it. So I'm gonna set that actually up on the track. And it's fairly free roll. Oh, if I put it on the track better, it might. There we go, it's on the track. It's very heavy. All of this is all die cast. Just set that there for now. The painter is, the painter, the tender is unpainted. Oh, this is the engine we're look at, working with here. The uh, condensing equipment does tend to go back and forth quite a bit, so you can see it does pivot. But let's start by just tearing this apart here. I shouldn't say tearing, but I will start with this. I've had this locomotive since September 2021. And yeah. Ah. So I think that screw I've taken this apart several times. There we go, okay. Alright, so this is screw over there. And I did I was able to get it to run then, but it's just not in the greatest condition. I always find these screwdrivers very finicky. And yes, I do know I am just taking off the base keeper plate for this point, but I do want to take a closer look at the axles to see what we're working with here. Because I actually haven't done that much of a restoration job to this locomotive, and I did one of the axles. I will put that back on. Get that axle back down. You know, so it seems to be fairly clean inside of there. So at least this uh, engine was never, when it was running, it was never running like on carpet or anything like that. So, that's 
Sorry. If any point in this video, I become really loud towards the mic. Okay. Not gonna do that. Axle should be locked in place. Now we are going to take off either one of these two screws and then the back screw here. So I believe one of these holds up the sets of cylinders. So I'm gonna do that, undo that one. So probably should start with the bigger one. And I'm going to open up the chest to the side here. This one. There we go. Yeah, I forgot I have to use this screwdriver size. Actually, I remember that screw actually takes off the motor, so let's put it here. Alright. Okay. <laughs> Took the right screw off. Good. Okay. So maybe at a later date I will. Have this get sand down and repaint it. it. Does have a little plastic sheet in there. I guess. So my finger can't poke out of it. So that is kind of a nice little pseudo glass thing. It is chipped all over and it does not have any of its marker lights anymore. One of them was gone to begin with and one of them was lost in transit. But just set that there. You can see our chassis we are working with. Is a five pull. Seems to be fairly dirty. My hands and fingers are getting dirty here. Uh, open. Seems to be moving pretty freely. A little oily, but it should be that way. And then I will take off the brushes here. I've done this once before. Okay. There we go. Okay. Set this little. Contraption to hold the brushes in. Ooh, into my hand. Set this on the train table uh, above. There we go. So that's it. Shot there, but and the brushes are out. Very careful with the brushes. And then let's take a look at our commutator, which I feel like <clears throat> seems to be looking like the main root of this problem. The wheels are still a little bit dirty. So, you know. I am looking to get a fiberglass pencil to clean some of these things up for now. But for the best for the time now, I am just gonna see if there's any oil on it. <laughs> Which there does seem to be. I do not generally recommend using Q-tips, but if you have something better, of course, such as a fiberglass pencil, that is still something I need to invest in. But we have, we are seeming to be, we have quite a bit of the grime. But not just these bills have a little bit of slack on them. And yeah, now you can actually get a closer look at the, uh, the drawbar situation here. It's, yeah, just a plastic covered paper clip. Rotates as much as you need it to. You have to take a look at now. Wheels, let's see. Ooh, these wheels do seem to, ooh, my fingers are really getting really grubby. Let's take a look at the, at the track and see how these. Um, So they are a little freewheeling, but ooh, geez, they do sound a little grindy. I think we could lubricate these axles a little bit. And maybe, yeah, try to clean these wheels. Oh, that's a weird sensation. 
Yeah, the tires are really loose on these wheels. Just tighten those in by pulling those out. Yeah, if I can hold one wheel but rotate the other wheel, yeah, that's a problem. The tires. It may lead to some derailing problems, I guess. Ah, okay. Now I found the problem now. I don't know if you can hear it, but the, the top set is very free rolling, but then you get down to the bottom one. It's not as much, so I'm gonna... There we go. Pull out the plastic sense. If you see, look at now, if it'll focus on that little spot there. It's flat. Well, earlier it had a little piece sticking out the top of it, so it wasn't flat. Focus on the rest. There you go. Uh, but yeah, so that seems to be good now. I will lubricate that once we start putting the model back together. But let's do one last wipe down at the commutator and then we'll take a closer look at the rods. Well, I will try to clean out the gaps too in between the wheels because that's also something, you, not wheels, <laughs> the gaps in between a plate in the commutator for this five pole motor. I don't know if I already said it was a five pole or not, but I am still getting oil and crap out of it. And my fingers are not touching the other side of it. So I don't know where it's exactly getting its oil from, aside from I bought it like this. Now, take, oops, sorry for bump the camera there. Small screwdriver, very small screwdriver, and I'll try to get the gaps there. All right, let's take a look at the drive rods here. They're dirty. This might as well be a two part video because I will do probably a second half where I just restored the outer body looks of this. You can see it's very dirty on the outside and everything. But let's try to put the brushes back in. All right, there we go. Okay, that took, surprisingly, less time than I thought it would. There we go. Got a little soupy there. I do need to get some thicker lubricant, so I am just gonna, this was just LaBelle 102. Oops, sorry. Just gonna put a dab of that in there. I know it's not the strongest and not the best probably for the gears, but putting this in is better than putting nothing in. And now, looking at the body here, I am going to just try to clean any of the, oops, sorry, dust off of it. Does not seem to be that much on it, which is nice, so it's fairly clean. There. <laughs> the inside of there, yeah, which is nice, so it's fairly clean. Rims. When you're doing that, you do want to make sure to hold the plastic piece still in because I think you could possibly dislodge it. Yeah, there's an inside shot if you ever want to do that. I could, if I wanted to, screw off the back plate here, but I don't think I need to do that for this restoration. So, there. Before I start working on the drive rods, I'm going to again. A little bit and just squirt. squirt. All right. 
let that soak in and round out. And there we go. All right. Okay. Oop. Right over the bottle. Now let's look. Take take a closer look at the dry rods here. They do seem to be. People focus. Hammer. Jeez, the autofocus has been really bad this time. But it does not seem to. So, a little bit of dust in there or something, but it seems to be fairly well. They did, I didn't see any binding or anything, but I am going to look in. Yeah, I am going to lubricate these. Okay, now, before we put the body fully back on, let's set that over to the side. We are going to take a closer look at the tender. All right, tender here. It does seem to be missing some kind of ladder in the back. Something like that. There's the screw hole. Can't see much else that could be wrong with this model. So I do want to investigate how there's only one set of brass wheels that pick up from you know this rail compared to there doesn't seem to be any on this side. But we'll take a closer look at that. The bogey does seem to be a little wonky. It's very free rolling. Both of them, so that should not be a problem, but I do want to take just a put this down a little bit further. Ah, there it is. So somebody along the way. Let's check this out. Decided to make the choice. Which one of these is isolated? This one. Decided to make the choice that. Okay, I don't know if you guys are fully seeing me. <laughs> but, somebody painted over the brass on the wheels. So that's why it's probably having a lot of problems picking up power, even though it's commutator, it's fairly clean. can tell that which side's isolated since this side has the glue onto the axle to isolate it. If you have any tips or tricks on how to do this a little bit better, aside from a fiberglass pencil or something like that, feel free to share them in the comments down below. I'd also like to ask you guys if you thought the price that I got this for was fairly reasonable or not. I haven't gone to too many events and I don't exactly know how reasonable it would be to get a steam engine like this. Because for the $25 I picked it up, I feel it's fairly reasonable, but I'm not the fairly new to this hobby, so I've been in it for ooh, 2019 was, yeah, 2019, here I started. So yeah, I had been watching other people a lot of the time, because that's truly what inspired me to fully get into this hobby. Somewhat cleaner, but it still's got 
quite a bit of spots on it. Put that more in the shot for you. Almost there. All right. Oops, she said we'll still. is looking quite a bit better. I guess I could also get a Dremel with a wire wheel, but that wheel is still looking better than the other wheel, which is entirely painted over. So I also find that ludicrous. That the person was like, mm, I'll just paint over that wheel. Right, let's see if this one's got metal underneath it. Yep, indeed it does. I wonder if there's any instructions for this kit. Oh, one time. Ah. It said to paint some of the wheels, and they decided to paint all of them instead of some of them. So who knows? I don't exactly know the age of this kit, but I do know that it actually interesting about thing about this kit is you could either buy it oh, that's wobbly uh, you'd buy this body shell with a 10 wheeler configuration or a 280 configuration Wait, those are looking a lot more shiny focus a lot more shiny than what they used to look like also should help it over the express point hopefully not it's not an express point i keep calling it that because they're the, the switch all right i think that should do the job for now and for a while Oop, that is a big spot though on this one while i still need to clean say that and then i'm like oh nope it's a fine spot upward check here and might have some oil on them but they're fairly free rolling and they do have a nice shine to them so set that down and I bump the camera again but I'm going to this screw that decided it wanted to go away from me Very important thing with this. Let's see, it's short out your controller. Which I know my controller, I think, doesn't. My controllers don't have any control like that. And you do have to loosen just a little bit. So if you loosen it all, if you tighten it all the way, it's very hard to do unless you just it's a smidge. It's all free rolling. So, so if I do this, I'm gonna... there you go. Okay. Let's focus on the other side now. I guess you can see the general shine already. And I know this is, is going to be one of my longer videos. Oops. Oh.
Oh, make sure it's tight to get out. Jeez. Okay. This one's out. Let's grab the side. Let's out of the way. All right. Now working with another set of dirty wheels. These wheels aren't as dirty to start off with. But, it is looking a lot shinier though. Oof, this one also has a big sway problem. I can also fix that later. But, let's get back to scrubbing up the other side now. Just one more spot. Alright. Oops, sorry. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, geez, I didn't think they'd get this grubby. All right, get that back in. Yeah, this one surely screws in all the way so it doesn't stop the wheels. All right, though, but that is looking quite a bit better. <laughs> so, I believe these wheels are just good enough to start off with, and it's only this side that needs to be clean. So, I haven't done too much work to these, but what I have done is kind of just this kind of pattern, and then I rotate the wheels. But, I did clean them beforehand, so I never actually cleaned the tender wheels until the start of this video. And, should also note, I am filming this video a day or two, I think, a day or two, uh, after the release of the latest layout update. I believe nothing has really changed that much. But I am now looking forward to completing over the dusty part of no, the dusty part of the layout. Um, uh, the mason board part of the layout, or also this part of the layout. I do want to get some grass for that area. Because that's a little dirty. I never really liked that. But before I put this on the front I am going to yeah. come on. Right in front of me. There you go. May have overdone that one just a little bit. And there we go. Come on, get on the track. There we go. There we go. It's a lot more free rolling. Oops. This trip over the point is. Okay, now let's start with the rest of the 
logo. Let's come back down. The wire. Make sure to do that. Here's the cab. Tab, there we go. A little. Lip tab. I have to get in there. Put it right underneath. So I don't know what this is because it's technically a Bowser, but Varney was bought by Bowser, so I don't know what the branding is exactly. I guess that is also something else to bring up with this. Then up here it says, yeah, Varney. And then that number down there. Uh, can tell you that it's just the same body that you can put on a 210, 282. I need the big screwdriver, the slightly larger screwdriver for this one. Sometimes these two don't want to bind. Just that irritates me quite a bit. There we go, okay. And let's put that piece back over. I don't know if there's something else to hold something in here with these little tabs back here, but. Oh. Thread that through. Mm. Got too many screwdrivers in there. But you can't tighten that one all the way because this still all pivots. And it does seem to make it run all of my curves. Okay. Alright, let's try to connect this back to the tender. There we go. And then just take the paper clip and wrap that in. Okay. Now to sum up this maybe 40 minute video, geez. Or 40 minute filming, I might speed it up, but I might not. All right. One shot. Okay, now. It's wheels thoroughly polished up. It does have some new oil in it, but it's alive. <laughs> and it might be a rough spot or two that I might need to clean up. Yeah, it's still as fun. I guess that's a shot for you. Okay, right now. Probably will stop. Maybe it won't. Okay, good. Do need probably clean the wheels a bit better, but have this back up. Back in the shop for you guys. And oh, nope, too far. Okay. And now let's get a set of uh, rolling stock for this train haul. Right now, guys, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. And here it comes one more time. And if you like this restoration and you sat through all of it or however long it is, um, well, you clearly like this content enough, so it's, it's funny. But all right, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.
I guess this is another side note. Um, <laughs> uh, there will probably be a second part of this coming out. To still clean up the wheels and maybe give it a paint job, but uh, all right, bye bye for real now.